Alex Hormozy made this video. My evidence-based guide to making money online. And I disagreed with 95% of what he said because I think that Alex is a certain type of person who is trying to acquiesce a very high level client. His average deal value is like in the millions of dollars. And so his social media tier list in terms of what is the best to build content or a business on or to advertise on is gonna be completely different and out of sync and out of touch with regular people. But we here on the Devin Nash channel have a more focused perspective, I think, because we not only advertise with hundreds and hundreds of smaller creators through my agency, but also talk to and work with smaller creators every single day. Thus is born the Devin Nash tier list for great social media platforms. It's gonna be based on two criteria. Number one, how good is the platform at building a business or creating content on with the goal of running a content creation? And this is generally from the perspective of like small people. And I think number two is going to be how good is it to be advertising on, but that's kind of a secondary weight compared to this one, okay? Let's begin. I think all of the platforms are here. I think we'll just go in order. This is probably going to be really long <laughs> and we'll talk and answer stuff in the meantime. And some of these, I don't even know. Let's start with LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, and again, I'll keep the weights up and the perspective and people are going to be surprised by some of these. We got all kinds of good stuff on here. People sleep on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really, really good. So for a couple of reasons, LinkedIn has one of the highest number of users compared to other platforms. LinkedIn has 800,000 users. Excuse me. <laughs> That's like nobody. 800 million users. 800 million. So I have four times the amount on Twitter. And LinkedIn is all engaged professionals. So I think LinkedIn is actually a super good platform for a couple of reasons. The creator to viewer ratio on LinkedIn is very, very good. There are extremely few creators and there are a ton of people that use the platform. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but LinkedIn was actually the first platform to have a social feed, but they kind of screwed it up because it was originally designed like Facebook, where you sort of just like share your events and share things with it. But recently, LinkedIn made some changes so that you can change your like page on LinkedIn to be a page that people can follow instead of connect to. And you can be a brand account. And if you're a brand account, you can post things that get traction on like a live social media feed that no one like really creates content on. So when you do create content on it, it does really, really well. I think that LinkedIn is an incredible tool either for building a business, for connecting with people to build a business or to um, create content on if you're an educational slash like professional type of person. For like gaming content and stuff like that, it's, it's going to be way less, but I'm going to put LinkedIn like actually solidly in the A tier. It's really good. If you are trying to connect with people, you can build your like A. So for like, for like the way that I think about these tiers, S like absolute best in class. A is like, you can still build a full-time business off of this platform if this is all you do. And I think LinkedIn like solidly hits that category where like you can build a professional business by posting content on LinkedIn. You're not going to get monetized on content creation. So for content creation, like gaming, like obviously like D, F tier, right? Any kind of like content creation where you're doing like entertainment, very low. But any kind of professional content creation, if you want to be an authority on something and then like drive people towards a course or an info product or something like that, easy A, easiest A of my life. It's very, very strong. Very, very good platform. Obviously for things like job uh, finding things like that, people sleep really, really hard on LinkedIn. Like truly. Will this tier list also work for artists and illustrators? Um, I don't know. LinkedIn also seems like it has more genuine users and not bots. It does. As far as authentic, like creating content and like feed stuff, I would say for advertising, LinkedIn is, is, is not good outside of like professional stuff has been our experience. I do a majority of gaming content, but say I were to post a video about being a better streamer, would that be advantageous to post on a one-off of LinkedIn? It would definitely be worth trying but I think as in terms of streaming and content creation, LinkedIn is not a platform that content creators and streamers regularly go to for authority on that, right? You'd be better off on places like Reddit or YouTube. Okay, so LinkedIn is a solid A. Guys, what the hell is this platform? What even is this platform? I don't even recognize this logo. I have several videos on Patreon about making content on LinkedIn, yes, yeah. Google Hangouts? Okay. Um, Google Hangouts is not good for creating content on. 
Um, I don't think that you're going to be able to really build a great business off that. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the F tier. Uh, what the hell is this icon then? Jesus, I don't recognize half of these. SMS? Okay, this is texting on phone. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's actually a good one. Okay. Texting actually is really, really good for business. For a content creator, I mean, this is like actually, okay. Some of the content creators around Twitch have had really great success with texting campaigns and nobody talks about it. For example, Amaranth had a really successful texting campaign where she would automatically have you sign up for like a phone number for a while. You would text, you'd get a picture and and then like, and then like she would talk to you for like girl, like OnlyFans creators or like people that have that like more personal touch with their brand. Dude, texting is, is actually S tier and a lot of content creators sleep on it. And, and, and you might think, oh, it's only for like OnlyFans creators. So imagine if someone like Kai Sanat on Twitch or Mr. Beast on YouTube was like, hey guys, like I have a phone number where you can talk to me and like um, I'll, I'll send you like updates or anything like that. And um, just like, like, and then like you get a personal message from Mr. Beast. You'd be, and like a lot of people are thinking like, oh, I would never like identify with that. But a lot of kids would be like, oh my God, I'm getting a text from Mr. Beast. Like, oh my God, I'm getting a text from Kai Sanat. Right. And, and, and so actually texting is like really, really solid form of marketing. You're getting right. You're getting past all of somebody's notifications and you're getting past all of somebody's like barriers and you're getting right into them. It's one of the best calls to action. So we've seen in advertising that text messaging has the highest rate of return out of any kind of communication. So for that reason, I would actually put S, like, I would put um, uh, texting in like the B tier. Because I think that texting is actually... A, so again, like my, my criteria is S is like best in class. You can't afford not to be on the platform. A is like you can build your own business completely off of, uh, off of this. And B is like it's a really, really good secondary type of thing to a primary content strategy or primary business strategy. I'm a huge fan of texting actually. I, like some of the best results I've ever seen in our advertising campaigns are from text campaigns. They're really, really good. It's not a huge investment. So, so it, it's, it's funny you bring that up. You might think it is, but there are services that give you a phone number and manage this thing platform to platform. And it's actually like really cheap to do. Like I'm talking like in the hundreds of dollars a month. So, com so the thing is, if you're a new... So uh, also I want to keep this centered on new content creators and newer business people. If you are building a content creation business and you're new, I would not use this at all. This is F tier. If you're building a small business locally that talks to people, let's say that you run like a landscaping business, then text, is, text can actually be really cool. I saw a um, housekeeping business that we were adjacent to in our local remarketing campaigns. And they were getting like something like 400% more customers simply by scheduling a text a month out and saying, hey, by the way, I'm going to be in your area. If you want house cleaning, like, let me know. And the person goes, I do need that cleaning. And then they sign up. So it's actually like, do not sleep on texting. Texting is like actually insanely good for business. And, 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 I, and it's like, it's really, really like if you're a new business starting up and you, you have some kind of service that you provide, I would 100% have a solid like texting campaign in mind, whether it be like, I'm getting a list of those people. I can both like blow them up on a, on a single list and give them updates every once in a while. Like having the kind of equivalent of an email newsletter for a service-based business is more powerful in text than it is an email. Local restaurants near me sometimes would send texts and they're having sales and stuff. Yep. Incredible. A lot of people are saying that dispensaries have them, dentists and things like that. Yeah. People still take text really seriously. Is this some um, voicemail? Oh, it's WhatsApp. WhatsApp is basically like D tier for content creation slash running a business. You only use it if you want to like talk to people back and forth. It's not really relevant. Okay. So, and this guy, is this iTunes? Yeah. Okay. I would put, I, I think I want to talk about iTunes and Spotify in the same type of way. So I'm going to put iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud is going to be different, but iTunes and Spotify are going to be in the C tier, which means situationally good for some people, but for most people, not relevant. So for podcasts and really actually let's talk about something interesting with Spotify where I want, I want to put it solidly ahead of like, I, I might even put Spotify in, in B tier for some people. And here's why actually, yeah, I am going to put Spotify in B tier and I'm going to put it at the head of B tier right now.
Um, and here's why. I actually think that, so number one, Spotify can monetize all of your videos. If you're a content creator, you can syndicate your videos to Spotify. You can syndicate all of your like media work to Spotify. You can monetize it through Spotify and you can get discovered through Spotify. So Spotify actually has a lot of growth opportunities for regular content creators. There are people that are making like YouTube videos or people that are making like, um, like other content. And you have no reason not to syndicate your videos to something like Spotify. Um, because you could get discovered in that way. And actually, this is something that a lot of content creators kind of sleep on, is the is the power of syndication. Like, you can syndicate everything you do to Facebook, right? You can also syndicate everything you do to Instagram Reels or something like that. Likewise, with Spotify, you can syndicate all of your videos as audio files, and you can, and, and you can actually do, like, pretty well and get monetized off of it. We... Um, we saw, I think, what was the number? Does anybody remember what the Spotify number is per million views? Isn't it something like, um, uh, is it $4,000 per, per, per million views? Is that right? I, so I think it's $4,000 per a million views. And if those views are literally free to get because you're just posting it up on Spotify, then go for it. Like, I mean, like, why not? So, so I actually am a big fan of Spotify. I think, Spot, I think Spotify is, yeah, it's like $4 RPM, Riker. Yeah, I think that's right. Like Spotify is actually a pretty good platform for discovery because there's a lot of algorithmic discovery. If you're, and like, I would not, just with the number of users, I would not underestimate the people that are like listening to business type content, listening to educational content, maybe even like gaming type stuff. Like, I try anything on Spotify and see what happens. I think that their algorithm is very good for discovering like minded stuff because they have to be since they're doing music. And if you have like a heavy metal playlist, you are um, getting recommended like really relevant heavy metal type of stuff. Obviously for artists, this is like S tier, you have to be on Spotify. I don't think I even have to say that for, for music artists, but I think a lot of other content creators shouldn't ignore it. Putting audio only work on your Spotify could be really effective, especially if you have kind of like long form type of stuff like I do. And I should probably take a note on that to syndicate. Uh, actually, musician with significant views confirmed that two to three dollars per a thousand view is possible and it seems to scale with quantity. Yeah, I believe it. Okay, iTunes, um, you got to be on there, but they they have like very poor discovery compared to Spotify. And I, and I mean, you could like, you could syndicate your content there. You could use a platform like anchor.fm that just puts it everywhere. And, and, and that's what I like. That's what I do. How are you not uploading on Spotify? Full-time job, man. I just don't have the time. I wish I, like I said, if I was a full-time content creator, I could do so much more, but with a full-time job, I'm so limited on my time. Okay. Um, now we're getting into some big ones, getting into some pretty exciting ones. Twitter, Twitter, the X.com, the controversial platform. Okay, I just want to keep in mind our criteria here, right? So how good is the platform of building a business or creating content on with the goal of running a content creation business or building a normal business? And how good is it to advertise on? First of all, advertising on is if, if there was a tier below F, I, I could not put it down further. Never, never advertise on Twitter. Jesus Christ. The system is a complete wreck. It, it, it's a total mess. So we're just going to talk about how Twitter works in terms of, and it's, 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 it's one that is going to, I think, get a little bit of anger because here we go. It is true that Twitter or X formerly known as Twitter has changed a lot since Elon has taken it over. But the ability to go viral on Twitter is still first in class. And the amount of inbound that comes in from like either thread type of content or long form type of content is really high. Now, I think that in terms of monetizing a content creation business or monetizing a business on Twitter... Twitter recently changed its rules. We had a talk in the mastermind about this. So I gave a bunch of specifics on like what Twitter's doing and the direction they're going in, in last week's Patreon video. I think that Twitter is realizing that they can no longer monetize off advertisers. And so they are going to try to monetize off of premium subscribers to Twitter Blue or X Premium, whatever it's called now. I don't think that model is going to work. And I think that the revenue pool for creators is going to dry up. Dry up. So like in terms of like making money on Twitter, it's going to be not very good. But man, the discovery on that platform is almost unparalleled. Like your ability to get in front of new audiences 
have a discussion, have people follow you and go to other places or to push product is really, really good. And people that subscribe to Twitter also kind of subscribe to like newsletters and also kind of like, like move into like products. So if you provide a lot of value on Twitter, even if that's entertainment value, it is a very good place to grow a platform. And I'm pretty convinced that it goes solidly in the A tier because if the A tier is defined by, can you build a business standalone on this platform? Then Twitter absolutely qualifies for that. You can get enough calls to action to buy product. You can get enough discovery to build a brand and leveraging things like controversial content or doing stuff that like intentionally pisses people off really does well on Twitter. And so a lot of influencers like health-based influencers or like start your own business type people, a lot of grifters for sure, but the grifters are making money. So it counts, right? Uh, but I also think that one thing that Twitter has that's interesting over all of these other platforms is that you can actually have a really high potential virality moment on Twitter that's not as possible anymore on even platforms like YouTube. Like you can go super viral on a tweet and, 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 get, and like it gets served to so many different people and Twitter is incentivized in a very unique way to serve things to different people and audiences. So despite all of the problems, the chat GPT, the, the, the racism, that there's a crazy amount of problems on Twitter, like at the end of the day, it's still a really, really good place to build. The bots are a problem, but there's enough real users on the platform, absolutely way more than enough to drive the engagement that you want. Businesses and making money from further ventures or as audience intent to sell to. Yeah, both work. Like the fact of the matter is that plenty of people are making full-time income off of Twitter easily and they're crushing it. So it's like, there it is. I was able to sell 3D models off of Twitter with a pretty small following and see other 3D models giving out value and pumping product sales because of it. Twitter virality is huge. Yep, there you go. I'm really glad you chatted. That's your first chat. Super high value. Thank you for doing that. That's it. That I, I hear that from so many people and that has also been our experience as well. So that that is um that is super awesome to hear you say that and that's what we're also seeing as well. I think it's very, very powerful. I'm tempted to put it, uh, Twitter in S tier, but S has got to be like absolutely best in class. TikTok is definitely the top of A tier. Alex Hormozzi rated TikTok very low. He also rated Twitter pretty low. Here's the thing about TikTok to understand. First of all, let's talk about um, business, building a business on TikTok. I'm trying to think if there is a better business platform for product sales than TikTok shop. And I don't think there is. TikTok is best in class on TikTok shop. TikTok shop is insane. As in, it's so good that like you can build a product-based business off of TikTok today. Like you, you, you start a live stream, you sell product, you have a TikTok shop. The TikTok backend for shops is amazing. Um, you easily upload product photos. They get approved within under 24 hours and you're selling. TikTok can do shipping for you. They can do fulfillment. They can do advertising. The organic growth from TikTok shop alone is enough to run a business. And that's before you even pay for ads or promotion, which also work really well on TikTok because we run a lot of ads. I, 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 I can't think of a better social platform right now for selling than on TikTok. Like it beats Shopify. It beats everything. It, 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 is, it is an all-in-one discovery tool as well as a e-commerce and distribution platform. It does everything. It's so good. And I, in my mastermind, like nine or 10 months ago, were showing people results of like what was happening on TikTok shop. And I was like, you guys cannot sleep on this. If you are in product or you're in distribution, you need to do, you need to do TikTok shop immediately. And like, I think that that is still true where, where just like people literally spin up a live stream. TikTok serves like 400 to 800 viewers to a live stream just because you start a live stream with no following. And then if you're talking about something interesting, you're demoing product, you're doing QVC type stuff, you're getting sales. Like I know of no other platform where you can spin up a business in 24 hours. And that's TikTok. TikTok is so insanely good for building a business. It's second to none. It's insane. It's incredible. For content creation, we are still seeing TikTok outperform almost every other platform. Recently, KCO came up through TikTok. People like Kai Sanat and the Amp House there are still massive YouTubers and massive Twitch people being created every day from TikTok. 
So some people think that like the virality is less or there's more people on the platform or whatever is not the data that we're seeing. Like, like we are seeing that like TikTok is overperforming. It's doing better on long form content. It's doing better on brand building. People on TikTok are becoming better trained because they're not just watching six second videos. They're watching longer form content now to go tr to go to, to go to other people's social media platforms. The calls to action on TikTok are very strong. You can direct link out to the profile and you can link all of that to a TikTok shop. Still has an enormous user base. It's great for everything from gaming to documentary to educational. Um, you TikTok is easily and solidly an S tier platform. As in like it, it, it is mandatory that people are on it. If you are in business, you can build a full-time business just on TikTok. If you are on content creation, you can build full-time content creation just on TikTok. Monetization wise for content creators specifically, the creator studio and the amount of money that's earned on TikTok is still low and probably always will be. I don't think that TikTok intends to like to raise its CPM significantly to make it so that like it's viable even off of a ton of views to make full-time money off of TikTok. So you have to branch out and either sell product or do different stuff in different ways to make money on TikTok. Like you can't rely on the advertising revenue like you can like a Facebook or like a YouTube type of platform. Um, and that's fine. Like I, I like TikTok is designed to be the ultimate top of funnel system. And for that, it works absolutely gloriously. Like if you want users to find you and you want and and you want like people to hear about what you're doing, like TikTok is still absolutely S tier. Do you think that TikTok could seriously get banned in January? TikTok will not get banned in the United States, no. So I think what will happen is there's it's a 50-50 whether TikTok is forced to sell or not. If ByteDance sells, they have said they will take their algorithm with them, and I believe them. I think the algorithm is like basically the fundamental part of TikTok. So what that'll mean is that like we'll address that problem when it comes to it. But the worst case scenario there is that TikTok's discoverability goes away. And like the US company that acquires TikTok just does a worse job with it and the platform just kind of declines. Like like Vine or like a lot of platforms have done before. And I think that's a that's a decently likely outcome. And it's why I always say that you should never be dependent on a single platform ever, right? But it's it, it's but as far as like actually getting banned in the United States, no. Like there's no way. Um but being forced to sell assets like ByteDance has said like they're they're not going to do like they're going to keep the algorithm which probably means that TikTok is going to be a um, declining platform if that algorithm gets sold along with ByteDance. And then it's you just have the user base. Still worth a lot. There's also kind of a question of who would buy TikTok in the United States, which um, I, I, I don't know the answer to that entirely. There's like a lot of different types of platforms that could do it. So not really sure. But we'll talk about that later too. Wouldn't any company that could afford to buy TikTok almost certainly be getting into a monopoly or antitrust situation? N good question. Not necessarily. There are large media conglomerates that it might apply to. For example, like TV networks or like even like Walmart expressed interest. There's like, there's a lot of people that might want to get into the digital space that are just like exclusively non-digital that might be interested in TikTok just because of its user base. So, so people with a lot of cash on hand, a lot of businesses have a lot of cash right now. So, so it, it's entirely possible that... It's not going to be like YouTube that buys them or anything like that. It's it, it's going to be someone esoteric. What the heck is this platform, guys? <laughs> what is this platform? It's 4chan, is it? Oh, oh, I have a lot to say about 4chan. Heck yeah, I'm glad it's on here. 4chan is not F tier. Like the, it's just you have to be really, really intelligent about how you advertise on it. So, so I don't think that 4chan has advertisers, does it? Like in terms of like, can you actually pay to advertise on the website? Does anyone know? Yes, businesses and trolls can pay to advertise on 4chan using the site's self-serve ad tools. Ad types are header, middle of page, and footnote banners. Ads cannot be safe for work. CPM starts at 20 cents with a minimum buy of $20. Ads can be used to promote products, websites, Kickstarter projects, or just for fun. Fascinating. So you, like, actually, 4chan has like a viable ads tool that's CPM based. It says, Ads cannot be not safe for work, which it blows my mind, actually. Um, but I assume that's because of their payment processors. Oh, man, what do I think about this? I'm so interested in this. Like, look at this post on 4chan. Plain City Skylines at 4am, Pippin Metropolis, and then he, like, tells a story about it.
So, like, if you know your audience and you know how to talk on 4chan, and this is organic, this isn't even a, this isn't even a, all right, let me, let me tell you something about marketing, okay, guys? Before everybody is like, what are you, Devin's about to put 4chan in S tier. Listen up, okay? You need to understand that marketers, advertisers, are like a swarm of flesh-eating locusts, okay? Everywhere they go, they ruin everything. They destroy everything. The more marketers that are on a platform typically means, almost always means, that the worse it is to advertise on. So the very fact that no marketers have thought of 4chan almost by default makes it interesting, okay? Like, if nobody is running ads at a place, users are extremely susceptible to them. And so, I think that 4chan is actually, like, a situationally really good advertising opportunity. So, I, I think C is our situational tool, uh, tier. C for situational, right? And... I might even put it at like low B depending on where everything else ends up. Because I think that if you know your audience, I think that if you can chat in the way that 4chan is used to being talked to, I think you have to be really culturally sensitive to what 4chan is. You can build something very good on there. And for that reason, I think it's, it's actually quite good. I would definitely run an advertising campaign, like a creative ad campaign on, on 4chan. It's just that so few of the really big agencies are even like familiar or would ever even try. But it's a very interesting topic. All right. SoundCloud. Big fan of SoundCloud. SoundCloud has made a lot of virality for music artists and also is a sleeper OP thing for podcasters, long form content, and education content. I feel like SoundCloud is in the same type of tier that Spotify is, except it's it's probably a little bit less. So I'm going to put it in C because Spotify actually allows you to monetize your content, but SoundCloud is not very good at that. So I actually think that SoundCloud Discovery is again C for situational. If you're a music artist, it's an easy like is it it's mandatory, it's S, right? But if you are a normal, like, long-form worm baby, it is actually pretty good, and syndicating to SoundCloud and Spotify absolutely can't hurt. I think a lot of people sleep on, Spot on SoundCloud. It's actually a very, very good platform. For some people, it'll be ANS tier in terms of discovery because I think it's getting harder and harder to find new users, like, purely real new users. And SoundCloud can actually be a good option for that. So I think that, um, again, it's not something that a lot of people think about, but it's something that is actually quite good. Okay. Easy to say, basically. All right. Facebook. One big problem with Facebook is that they used to have a funnel where new users came into the platform based on organic content and a lot of different kinds of content did well. Things like video and things like test-based posts and posts. And for all sorts of content creation, even live streaming for a while, it was very good. And you could also monetize your pages off of running ads off of your pages. And there was a point in Facebook for about nine months where you could make more money off of the ads that you had on your page if you ran ads against it. And it was an infinite money machine, basically. Like you could literally, like you could, you could spit up like a Call of Duty page and then you could run ads against it. And the ads and the, and the stuff that you made off the page was more than the ads that you ran. And it became like a self-fulfilling business. You could make like two, $3,000 a month per page. And in some genres, that's still true. But the problem with Facebook became that Facebook decided to put another funnel here and this became the paid funnel. So the problem with the paid funnel was that organic content that previously was working on Facebook got replaced and overwritten by paid content that wasn't necessarily as good. And so for a while, Facebook became a really hard place to grow because if you didn't promote your posts, you um, didn't get any traction. And since then, Facebook has actually become pretty good about fixing that based on like all current research. 
and now you can still pay to promote your posts, but organic search is valued uh, a little bit more reasonably. Now, Facebook has a lot of active users in a lot of different demographics. People think it's just for old people. That's not true. Facebook is a great place to build content in certain areas. I think it has a solid gaming audience. I think it's it's the strongest audience it has is political. So if you're running up like any kind of political anything. And then in terms of e-com and distribution, Facebook Marketplace is a very strong tool and running ads against Facebook Marketplace. The, the, the Meta is the second best ads in the world next to Google. And debatedly, Meta is better for quite a few things. Also for local business, Facebook is crushing it. Facebook groups are super, super powerful for local businesses. You can run a local, like if you're like a landscaping company, you can run like how to do the best landscaping. And then you just like post tips about landscaping and the actual, and it actually is a funnel up to your landscaping business. And those work extremely well. So a lot of people in our Patreon and our mastermind have used Facebook groups really effectively to drive business. So again, you kind of have a situation like in TikTok with TikTok shop, you have Facebook marketplace, you have the content creation side of it, where Facebook is kind of an all-in-one. And it's a really, really powerful platform. I want to put it really solidly, and it, it, it's going to lead A, absolutely. And um, it, 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 it's not going to break into S. And the reason is because S is the platforms I think it's like you are absolutely brain dead if you're not on there. And... Facebook is a platform that sits in A because our criteria for A is can you run a fully functioning business just off of this platform using nothing else? And the answer is yes. But I'm very, but it's not like an absolutely mandatory platform. Obviously, a lot of people build businesses and a lot of people like um, uh, do well outside of Facebook. So Facebook is solidly leading the A tier and is really, really good. There is no reason as a content creator you can't syndicate content all the way across to there, put all your videos up there, put shorts up there or whatever. And simultaneously, if you're e-com distribution, might as well have a shop on Facebook Marketplace. Very, very good. Snapchat. We did a lot of work with Snapchat as an agency, and we were one of the, we were a Snapchat agency for a while about a year ago. Actually, we still have that relationship. So we started a lot of uh, a lot of creators. Snapchat has a feature called uh, the Spotlight feed, which is a um, thing you have to sign up for as a creator. And if you get into it, it's like crazy for advertising. Snapchat is a really great discovery tool today. Um, and it's also very good for interacting with your users. There's pretty much nobody. Yes, the, the inside tiers are also ordered. Yes, yes, for sure. So so Facebook is currently leading A tier. Um, I think Snapchat is a solid C as like situational for, for certain content creators, but it's like something that pretty much, Snapchat has certain rules around who can be in the spotlight queue and you have to have certain regulations. I think I put it at a solid C and I think I put it like probably above 4chan. Um, I'm excited like in terms of discovery, but there's no monetization on Snapchat really. You can't really make any money off of it. And it's pretty limited in terms of like how you can drive users off the platform. So I actually would probably put it Maybe a little bit below, like I put it below SoundCloud. No, I don't know. It's kind of a tough one. It's somewhere in here. I think I put it below SoundCloud. Situational. DeviantArt, great place for artists to find their stuff. Obviously, it's going to be super situational. So we're going to put that there. Can't monetize either, um, but it's a good opportunity for people um, to uh, find stuff if you're an artist. Very, very situational. Um, let's use... Uh, okay, Discord. Isn't there some creators in Snapchat that make a lot of money just from posting snaps? Yes, it does exist, but the problem is, like, I'm building this tier list for, like, the general person trying to build a small business, the general person trying to grow content creation like for the vast majority of those people like they should ignore snapchat one of my problems with, with like the alex hermazi list is he's telling you like oh you absolutely have to be on some of these esoteric platforms like you like app like and i don't think that's true you don't need to be even focused on snapchat if you're a content creator there are they're all on all these platforms like there's somebody that's crushing it on google hangouts he's doing like a thousand dollars an hour right but it doesn't make it relevant to most of us 
Discord. Discord's so good, man. <laughs> um, Discord is an unbelievable place to interact with your audience. It's slept on by advertisers because you can pay very low amounts to get in front of a lot of people on Discords. And because not many people advertise through it or like no one advertises through it, you can make, you, you, you can stand to make a lot of like money as a small business, like finding relevant Discords about your product or service and get it into them. Um, it's a very, very poor tool for discovery, like as in zero discovery. And that actually knocks it down a lot now that I think about it. Because a lot of these platforms have built-in discovery. I was pretty solidly going to put this in the A tier. But I wonder if it doesn't lead the B tier or sit somewhere in the B tier. Because there is absolutely zero discovery on it. As in like nobody new can find you no matter what you do. So very good for advertising. Like solid A advertiser. Like people shouldn't sleep on it. But like very good for community building. No discovery and no monetization. So actually, as I think through it, it's 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 probably quite a bit less than these other tiers. It's good, and it's a platform that really can augment your community, but there's no way to monetize it, and there's no way to get discovered on it. So I guess uh, originally I was looking at it, I was looking at it for, like, I, I'm tempted to put it either leading C, but it's like very good mid funnel, right? Like, it, it, it's 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 a very good mid funnel platform, like debatedly. But there's kind of a question that's like, okay, well, it's, it's mid funnel, and like, so what? So like, you you get people in the mid funnel, then what do you do there? Drive them to more products, or like, get them more interested in stuff? I don't know. Yeah. So I think it's a solid B. Discord does do memberships. Those aren't really like realistic. It's good for community retention. There's no data on that. Like, what's to say that like you just run a stream every day, or you like do a YouTube's and like you you like your channels don't do fine. There's plenty of people that don't have discords and they are doing totally fine. So I think it's B or C, no discovery. As I think through it, I originally thought that discord was really good, but actually as I really think about it, not so good probably because no discovery, no monetization. Google Plus, I'm going to put Google for business in this tier, um, which uh, which means that it's going to rate a lot higher than you might expect. So Google, Google Plus or Google for business is a mandatory part of any business. You have to register on Google for business. It's really, really good. Um, Google for Business and Google Reviews are like kind of second to none for local businesses. And they kind of, they like they took over Yelp. They lead the charge. It's very easy to run advertising on. It's really like they don't have a social media component. So the problem with Google Business is obviously it falls like way, way below TikTok, right? Because they, they, there's no way to like get discovered really. Um, well, unless you're like going through reviews, but like you need to be on the restaurants near me list. Like if you're not on Google Business, like you don't exist. So I think that Google Business is uh, obviously situational. Um, but it's situationally good. And if for anybody that's starting a small business or a local business or whatever, this is like mandatory. You have to register this. It's very quick, very free, very easy. And running so, like uh, having some kind of system or some kind of like feedback where you go, hey guys, 15% um, off your next order if you leave a Google review or um, some of the like um, chain restaurants like BJ's or like Chili's or like those kind of places have uh, have programs where if you leave a review, like you get a discount, you have like a rewards program. This is all a very good idea to do with Google Business. Google Business is, is, is incredible. So I, I put Google Business here in this category. Absolutely mandatory for small business. Absolutely small, like any kind of local business, any kind of restaurants, any kind of food, anything like that. Um, any kind of services, businesses, getting reviews on there and getting uh, pumped up on Google Business can actually drive a significant amount of stuff. I had a computer repair company that I used to run and I did a bunch of work on Google Business very early on for that computer company. And quite literally, I still get phone calls for that computer company like 10 years later. Like um, like just, just people that found me off of Google Business and found me off of my reviews. It's really good. It's super good. Is this Facebook Messenger? Uh, Messenger is like the same type of thing as uh, as text messaging. We're just going to put it in the, the same tier. Um, or it's like kind of not, it's kind of like not relevant. So we'll just put it in like F because it doesn't make any, it's like not relevant to what we're doing. It's great though. Like it's, it, 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 it's super good for, um, it, it's just like the same type of thing. Actually, no, I don't want people to get misunderstood. We'll put it in the same level as text, but it really should go with like Facebook. Okay. Reddit caveat here is that I think I don't know as much about Reddit as I know about a lot of these other platforms. I've never run advertising on it. Unlike like a lot of these platforms where I've run like a ton of advertising on it. As far as like content creators and discovery, it can be okay. But my tendency is to think of Reddit in quite a low tier. I have seen some positive conversion from um, OnlyFans or adult type creators who make Reddit posts. And then 
they um, drive people to their OnlyFans and stuff through pictures and things like that. So, like, situationally for that use case, I can think of it. But, like, for any, like, content creators or, like, people starting businesses, I, it's, it's hard, I'm hard-pressed to think of anybody that has, like, built a business off of Reddit or built, like, a content creation career off of Reddit. And also, like, let's say that you're the, like, you're the mod of, like, a 1 million viewer subreddit. It doesn't seem like those users, like, actually want to go anywhere. They're very focused on their, like, particular topic. I guess there's been some discovery on things like our videos. Things have gone viral on Reddit. I don't know. It's, like, low C at best. And I think that's pretty generous. Like, like if not, like, D tier in terms of, like, it, like, Reddit has really strict policies on advertising. And I think that there are there's like some situations, but like self promotion is banned there. You need to do like nine to one. I think it like leads D tier. I, I I wouldn't really recommend any content creator focus on Reddit in a serious way. You can have your own subreddit and you can like like pull like memes off of it and things like that. But in terms of discoverability monetization, not a fan. Healthy gamer is the only creator I can think of that started primarily on Reddit. Alok did not start on Reddit or, 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 or at all. Alok is big because of YouTube. Remember that this channel talked to Alok when he was 20 viewers. His streams and, Reddit, and, and YouTube blew him up. Yeah, I can't think of a better use case for Reddit, so we're going to put it in D. Instagram is a really tough one. So we have to remember like what we're doing and like generally like how we're scoring things is like in terms of discoverability, building a business, creating content, getting dis getting paid for content, getting paid for business sales, e-com, distribution. The thing about Instagram is that it's so good for certain people and it's utterly useless for other people, which makes it like, I guess that makes it a C tier, right? Because like the, the, the thing is, if you're like an apparel company, like a hundred thieves made millions of dollars on Instagram alone because it like the apparel streetwear feel, feel of it made it super popular. There are like Instagram influencers who get paid to do shots, photographers, people like that, that do so well on Instagram. And Instagram ads are also quite good because they're based off the meta network and we've had a lot of success with Instagram ads. I think Instagram is like A tier, low A tier for ads. Um, but there are many different genres on Instagram that do very well. And so I think Instagram probably leads C tier with a couple of caveats. C being situational. It's like, it's like probably the most situational platform I can think of. But like a lot of content creators and a lot of business owners don't need to use it. And furthermore, they also fall into the trap of using it. Like if you're a local business, you don't need to use Instagram for like, if you're a, if you're like a landscaping service, if you're a computer home repair, you don't need to use Instagram. Like you need to be solidly like on like an A tier platform, like Facebook. So there are a lot of people that are making a ton of money off of Instagram, but you need to be in the right genre to do it for discoverability and content creation. I'm going to say solidly that I don't know. This is where the tier list starts to get hard. Cause like, Instagram can monetize your content. So if we're putting it below Discord, like there's no way that Instagram can be below Discord. So maybe it's low B and then and then Discord gets downgraded to situational. I think that's fair. There's a lot of businesses that can't use Discord. I, I'm probably overvaluing Discord because I'm a content creator in the Twitch space and YouTube live space. I'm overvaluing Discord because of live streaming. But for outside of that use case, which is very small, Discord is dog shit actually. Um, so I think that Instagram now, now the question is like, does Instagram sit below text messaging? It, it does. Yeah, it does. It's like getting sales on text messages and building text messages campaigns are, are way, uh, is way, way better. So I think it's like low C, low B, excuse me, where like, there's just, there's enough cases that it becomes really interesting. And the X factor for Instagram is I don't know how good the discoverability is because I don't have enough data on it. So it's possible that Discord, uh, that, that Instagram actually is really good for discoverability and I just don't know it. And I might come back to this later and be like, I was wrong. So give me, give me a pass on that one.
um, that maybe maybe Instagram could actually go into the A tier and, and, and shoot above Spotify if the discoverability is good. I just don't know. For Discord, I don't think you considered a lot of people have their Discord as a product they are selling. No, they don't. Uh, very few people sell product on Discord. Very, very few. That's almost non-existent. So that's where I, I think I'm safe on Instagram there. And I, I, I might deserve to be higher. FaceTime? Yeah, let's just hang out. It's F tier, easy. Okay, Twitch. Twitch! Oh, baby. Finally, my chance is here. People know what's coming. <laughs> F tier. <laughs> Twitch is very bad um, for a lot of reasons. So the, 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 the number one problem with Twitch is that it has no discoverability. You cannot get found on Twitch, which automatically puts it like, so if it were to be like an A tier, like all these platforms that have discoverability, they, they beat it. Um, that's a huge problem because we want to build our business. We want people to find us. The other problem with Twitch is that outside of gaming, it's totally useless, not only for advertising, but also for building anything like it's sort of a joke that I run a business stream on Twitch and you know, we're the only people in class that run a business stream on Twitch and people are like, oh, the look at dude, Atrox plays video games the vast majority of the time, right? Like there are no business streams on Twitch besides mine. And the fact that I run a business stream on Twitch is because I'm highly, highly uh, focused on like the particulars of this industry. And, and, and like the meta of it. So Twitch is useless outside of gamers. It is an incredible funnel for OnlyFans. Yes. If you are an OnlyFans creator, Twitch is S tier. Unironically, I'm not even joking about that. It actually is. <laughs> it really is. The top of funnel for OnlyFans creators is incredible through Twitch. It's 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 like I've said before, and I, I I like firmly believe this that Twitch is actually the perfect platform for OnlyFans creators. You can see just enough to make it interesting, and then it drives you right to a paid platform. It's amazing. Yes, S tier, mandatory for OnlyFans creators. Actually, it's very good. But for everybody else other than gaming and, 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 and like for people that watch my channel a lot, you know that I generally value gaming kind of low in terms of like content creation. The CPMs are bad, discoverability is bad, and it's typically really highly saturated. So I'm not a huge fan of building a brand on gaming, especially today. If all you were going to do is make your platform on Twitch and you did nothing else, you will fail as a content creator. You can't run a business off of it either because if, like, let's say you're a landscaper, what, are you going to stream on Twitch? Might actually be interesting, but you won't get discovered. You'd be much better off, like, doing YouTube. And I think of, like, the YouTubers who, um, like, have you ever seen those, like, people, like, people cleaning drains and stuff? They get millions and millions of views. Like, um... They, they, they kind of, fall, like, look at this. 28 million views, drainage cleaning, 1.2 million views, drain unclogging compilation, 557,000 views, block drain, 1.2 million views, how pipes are cleaned, 22 million views. This is an industry, man. But this type of stuff, like, doesn't work on Twitch, right? So there are a few use cases where some kind of weird shit can work on Twitch. Um... Stuff like Maya's uh, Animal Sanctuary is interesting. There's a couple arts and crafts things that do interesting, like that one guy who makes wood. It's like the Samoan dude that's super cool. But overall, Twitch is not a reliable platform for monetization or for discoverability. You can, you can say like, oh, but people make money on Twitch. And if you look at the data, because like, like what I'm, what I'm trying to... What I'm trying to show people here is like, like again, this is our criteria, right? We just go down the list. Discoverability, zero. Building a business, impossible. Creating content, okay. But since you're not getting discovered, like getting paid for content. You can get paid for content here, but only one in 15,000 people that click the start streaming button never will. And then getting paid for business sales, e-commerce distribution, non-existent. There's no QVC on Twitch, even though there is on other live streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube that have done it successfully. And even Amazon does it better than Twitch. The, the product, the, the, the live streaming service that they own does it better. So the only thing that it really has is getting paid for content. And even that is astronomically unlikely. So I cannot in good faith recommend Twitch as a platform. I think it leads F tier. I think, I think it's, I think it's, I, 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 I got to think about this now in comparison to the other platforms because it might get upgraded to a D if I think about it. 
What the hell is this again? Is this voicemail? Are we saying that Twitch is worse than voicemail? <laughs> this, is, this is WhatsApp? Oh yeah, I think I can make more money on WhatsApp than I could on Twitch, 100%. I'm confident with that. Yeah, I definitely could. WhatsApp is actually like not bad. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty um, confident. Yeah, yeah, what, WhatsApp should be higher, I agree. Um, I might, yeah, I, I might put WhatsApp in situational. I think you're right. I'm happy with where Reddit is. And there's a lot of money to be made in WhatsApp. And also, it, yeah, like people are saying it has a huge EU following. So Twitch is Twitch leads F tier. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Yeah, I'd say it's worse than all of these platforms. Um, so this is kick, but we're not going to use the platform kick because it's not relevant. This is going to be kick streaming. So this, so this kick is going to be kick.com. This is going to be kick the streaming website. We're going to talk about kick next. The problem with kick is that it has every problem that Twitch has and then more, even more. It is impossible to get discovered. There is not a single business on kick. Creating content is you can do it. You can get paid for content, but it's like very shaky and you, there's no e-commerce sales distribution on, on, on kick. So the streaming platform kick has every single problem that Twitch does and then some. And while the ownership is motivated, it doesn't seem to me that anything has really transpired in the last year or two years that is interesting. The creator payouts are interesting, but very few people are making money on Kick, probably way less than on Twitch. And to top it all off, and my biggest problem with Kick is that advertising there is impossible and is a huge brand safety problem. So I'm going to put Kick leading the F tier. <laughs> I think it is the worst platform to advertise out of any of these and the worst platform to create content on. There's no discoverability. The chance to make money on the platform is already incredibly low, which is infinitesimal even compared to Twitch. And the people you associate by going on Kick automatically drives you to a tier of content creator that gets ostracized from anybody reasonable. And as much as like the Kick ownership talks about like being against the advertisers or whatever, like, I don't know. Advertisers are usually right, so. Kick is F. It's the worst platform, I think. That's actually not true. I know a lot of streamers on Kick making a lot of money. Make your own video. Like, like prove me wrong. I So, I told you that 1 in 15,000 people make money on Twitch of any kind of relevance. And that's objective data based on thousands and thousands of streams that we analyze. And Kick is less than Twitch. When you're looking at a platform, you have to look at the whole of the platform. You have to look at all of the users on the platform, if they're making money or not, if they're being discovered or not. And just because you know one guy on a platform that's doing something, I guarantee you there's somebody in the universe that's making a million dollars a month off of Google Hangouts. But that doesn't make it S tier that you have to run it. I think it's safe to say that Kick is in the F tier. It's everything that Twitch is, but worse. And like that said, like it, it doesn't mean that you can't, that like Kai Sanat is making, you know, 10 to $12 million a year on Twitch, but that doesn't make Twitch viable. Like this is the problem that Alex Hormozzi ran into that um, I didn't want to make a tier list like that, where just because this is working for Alex, whose client base is three to $5 million entrepreneurs, it's going to work for you. The truth is that if you start a stream on Twitch or Kick, you will not succeed. It's astronomically unlikely that you will succeed, especially compared to these other platforms. If you start a TikTok, you have a very, very high chance of succeeding. If you start a Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, very, very high chance of succeeding. But if you start a Twitch or Kick stream, you will not succeed. It would be, I would take, I would take a bet against you in Vegas every single time because it's one in 15,000. I take three to one on you every single time. Again, doesn't mean that you can't succeed. It just means that it's very unlikely that you will. Can you put Rumble on the list? You're instantly monetized after they verify my email and I paid two ads per video, made my unsubscriber place too. Unlike other platforms, you'll have to get a certain number of views. Yeah, Rumble, if this was on this list, would be a solid like C for situational. It's, it's pretty good in some cases. We've done a lot of work with Rumble and I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not unhappy with Rumble. Uh, I don't have it on the list, but it would be a C if it was on the list. It'd be situational for some creators. Yeah, particularly like politics or things like that. 
the reason I fixated on it, Chad, is because I want to try to, um, um, I'm trying to explain why we can't use anecdote to inform data. This was the, the whole reason I made this video, or I'm making this video, is because I want people to, like the, the Alex video, the problem with it was it was all from his perspective and his context, which is helpful to no one. But we need to look at the overarching alignment of people in these respective platforms. So we need, we, we need to actually trust the data. Okay, let's talk about Pinterest. Pinterest is a very, very good platform. And by the way, there's a lot of discussion that goes on um, in discord.g slash Devin. If you guys want to go to discord.g slash Devin, uh, I'm going to link it here. There is always active discussion going on around these streams. And um, also, if you guys want to support patreon.com slash Devin Nash, um, all of the money that we make goes back into the stream. We need a lot of money because I work a full-time job. And so we pay for everything. Um, super big appreciate. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let's do Pinterest. Pinterest is a amazing platform for a particular demographic, and that is shopping women. 74% of users on Pinterest are women. The most successful advertising campaigns where we have women as a demographic, we have done on Pinterest. And we've run a lot of money there. So um, unfortunately, though, because that is really the only place that, it, that, that Pinterest is good, it's super situational. And for that reason, it like probably sits like solidly below, like it's like it's like tied with Discord. If it does, if it doesn't lead Discord, it it, it, it ties it. It probably leads Discord overall because there's just more relevant use cases to, for it than than Discord. The problem with Discord is like Discord is like super niche and super situation to a certain audience. Pinterest appeals to a much bigger audience. But there's there's a bunch of different types of stuff that doesn't work on Pinterest. Um, but anything like home. Uh, home improvement, clothing, uh, like any kind of apparel type of stuff, kind of like cute arts and crafts types of stuff, jewelry, all that stuff like crushes on Pinterest and I think does just as well as like Instagram. Basically the stuff that works on Instagram can work one-to-one -one on, on, on Pinterest, but Pinterest doesn't have like a lot of very strong monetization options and obviously, dis but, but discoverability is there. So um, I, am a, I am a pretty big fan of Pinterest overall for what it does. And a lot of a lot of people can make a lot of good money off of Pinterest for your particular demographic. So if you if your demographic is like 24 to 36 year old females and older actually, 100% you should um consider Pinterest. Quora. Um actually I have a lot of experience with Quora. Quora is super solidly F tier. Um if not D it's 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 F tier. It's like just above kick, I think. Um, the reason is because we have done both organic content creation campaigns on Quora, and we've also done um, advertising on Quora. And in both cases, it's useless. Um, you would think that this is higher, but I actually have real data on this. The problem is that it is absolutely overrun by AI responses, and there's no real enforcement or effort um, to try to like dictate what is an AI response and what isn't. You can you can actually go see um, if uh, you go look at Quora that I have some stuff on there. I have a, a, a whole like thing here where I've um, answered different Quora questions and stuff. And it has had absolutely zero results. I've never gotten even a single impression despite the, uh, the, the views. And all of the stuff that we've run on Quora literally got us zero impressions and i mean zero impressions quora is a question and answer website um also quora is getting annihilated on search and ai is going to annihilate quora so um pretty much only useful for you to ask it a question like how uh what is the safe cooking temperature for salmon and then you don't engage with that answer at all um so you can get views on Quora, those views don't correlate to anything. They don't go anywhere. Um, it's absolutely terrible as a platform and I would never use it and I don't recommend it to anybody. So that's it. Um, okay. Uh, being a Quora like creator is like a total waste of time. Skype. Um, I, I almost want Skype to be the worst platform, 
but I think Kick is even worse because I think Kick does so much. Kick can actually damage your brand. At least in Skype, when you're talking to people, you're not talking to anybody. So because there's nobody to hear you there, even if you say like terrible racist stuff, you can't get banned, and you can't get uh, you can't get canceled. But on Kick, you actually can. So I think that it's still worse. <laughs> I think I think that I think it's still I think I think kick is still worse. <laughs> but yeah, uh, suffice to say that Skype is not a thing. Criteria: discoverability. There's nobody there. Building a business. There's nobody there. Creating content. There's nobody there. Getting paid for content. You can't. And getting paid for sales. Can't. So Skype is ded, bro. Dead. All right, Steam, obviously situational. For the situation it's in, it's very good. Actually easily above everything else besides Discord and Pinterest, and let me tell you why. Steam has a couple of functionalities that a lot of people don't know about that make, the, make it very good. Number one is um, you can be a curator, is that the word? Yeah, it's a, it, it's a curator where you make reviews and you can actually get draw a lot of people into whatever you're doing because of that uh to list a game on steam is a flat hundred dollars and if you're a game creator like obviously you have to be there it's s tier mandatory steam has great discoverability options it's it, it, it's it's a fantastic platform for discoverability it's a fantastic platform for um finding new games especially like types of stuff that you're interested in the recommendation engine for Steam is actually very good. And like, it's so solidly mandatory for any kind of game development. But one of the things that it also is good for that a lot of people don't realize, it's actually quite good for its groups. And we had a group on, uh, a, the, uh an old, old group on, uh, and also I built this Team Dignitas group, um, the MCAS community group and the Team Dignitas group are actually, were both really great in terms of call to actions and things like that. So um, we used to post our merchandise on here and CLG had a page as well, but obviously that's gone because CLG is gone. Rip, grandma, I also started the CLG page though. And um, it has done surprisingly really well. Great calls to action, really high engagement. Like, like you can also, uh, probably the most powerful thing you can do through Steam is you can send a message that pops up as a notification to people, either to call them to a specific link or to get them to buy something or whatever. So Steam groups are really, really powerful for even things that are kind of outside of gaming and they're gaming adjacent, like esports. And I think a lot of people sleep on Steam. So Steam is a... Uh, we used to use Steam as a call to action for our broadcast. And this used to have like, you know, 700, 800 members. And we would use um, Steam as to, to let people know about our drops. And it outperformed Discord. And it also outperformed most of the other kinds of calls to action that we had. Um, so for that reason, I think Steam is actually really, really highly rated. And it, 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 it clearly, out, and actually, um, come to think of it, Steam outperforms Discord, because I actually know factually that it does. So, so in terms of calls to action and everything, Steam does better. Um, so I actually put it almost leading the C tier, Pinterest obviously leading the C tier, because Pinterest is situational, but to all women, so it's way more popular. Um, as far as content creation goes, um, creating gaming content on Steam and review content is not a bad idea to drive new viewers if you're an informational type of Total Biscuit type of feel. Pretty good. So, big fan of Steam. Big fan of Steam. I think it's a, it's a very great platform. Tinder. Can you run advertisers on Tinder? Can you run ads on Tinder? You can run Tinder ads on Facebook. I didn't even know this. That is really interesting. You can advertise on Tinder using a Facebook business account or Google ads. Can be a cost-effective way to reach younger audiences. I think Tinder is a phenomenal use case for like the escort slash OnlyFans crowd. And for that reason, it actually might not be F tier. Um, obviously for the vast majority of creators, it's not useful. And for the vast majority of businesses, it's not useful. So by our criteria here, discoverability, very high for that particular business. It's really like one use case that it's good for. 
So like, I don't know if it deserves D tier. Like is Tinder better than Twitch? No, it's not, right? If you're, okay, yeah. Cause if you're a girl and you want to do OnlyFans and you want to get more people, Twitch is better. So I think Tinder is F tier, pretty obviously. I don't know how the ads do. They might do pretty good. So if you're an OF girl, like you, 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 you go to Tinder. Yeah, it's, it's probably worse than Google Hangouts and everything too. Like I think you could probably make more money off of just individually calling people as a girl for escort service than you would off of Tinder. Is it worse than Quora? No, Quora is dog sh Yeah, okay, so so yeah. Yep, okay. YouTube. YouTube is easily, unequivocally, the best platform in this list. And it isn't even close. On all categories. Absolutely mandatory. If you are not a business or content creator on YouTube, you're an actual brainlet. Discoverability is beyond S tier. It's better than any other platform, whether it be shorts discoverability, long form content. You can put any business on YouTube. There is literally not a single type of business that doesn't work on YouTube. Even absolutely not safe for work stuff works because you can drive people to it. That's why girls do like try ons and stuff like that and things like that. Creating content is absolutely S tier. Getting paid for content is S tier. It's the highest paid CPMs out of anybody. And getting paid for sales and e-com has its own storage distribution systems. And you can use the Google backend. And for running ads, it's the best ads in the business. YouTube is absolutely S plus, 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 plus tier. It is absolutely unbelievable how good, how, how good YouTube is. It is no question that you need to be on YouTube as a content creator. It is no question that you need to be on YouTube as a business owner. The only exception would be if you are like a local business, you might be able to use some of the other stuff that we talked through. And then the other thing about YouTube that's so incredible is that YouTube is actual, actually um, scientific in the terms of growing on it. So if you understand how to grow on YouTube and you understand like what works, then you can grow a channel no matter what. Like it's not a matter of luck. Whereas on every other platform, including TikTok, it's luck to some extent, if the algorithm picks you up or not. But on YouTube, it's not luck. It's, it's, all, it's all designed. YouTube has put the most amount of money into its discovery. It's done the most amount of money into building channels and it is absolutely the home for content creators. You have to have a YouTube, that's it. It's also great for businesses. It's also great for, uh, it's, it's great for CTAs. The highest CTAs of absolutely any platform uh, beats Twitch 200 to one on average in terms of people that uh, click on things and go engage with things. Um, literally 200 users for every, uh, on Twitch for every one, uh, for, sorry, 200 users on YouTube engage for every one user on, on Twitch. It's not even close. It, it is an insane platform. There's nothing just from community posts to shorts, to discoverability, to money-making. It's it. It's it. It's so, so good. It wins the entire list and there's nothing even close. What the hell is this? <laughs> Does anyone even know? Vine? Ugh. I guess I put Vine a little bit above Skype and below kick.com because Vine is a completely dead platform. But again, you can't blow up your brand like you can on kick. Is Vine actually dead? Can you? Oh, it's shut down. You literally can't even. Oh, it's owned by Twitter. Okay. Elon says he's currently exploring what to do with it. It's literally dead. So does a literally dead platform beat kick.com? I think so. Because kick actually harms your brand to be on. It's better to not exist than to be on kick.com. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. <laughs> like, Because like, a dead platform can't hurt you. Yeah, exactly. And Zoom obviously is, um, you know, somewhere in the Hangouts tier. It's around here. Uh, what is this, chat? What's this? What's this? What's this? Omegle? Yo, Omegle can Omegle can crush actually. Omegle is a is a is a decent D. Definitely better than Twitch. <laughs> I I I don't know. Omegle is Omegle. I'm just kidding, guys. Omegle is actually a dead. Does Omegle even work anymore? Is it even alive? Omegle. A tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most depressed. What happened to Omegle? It got banned? Kermit showing his pickle got it banned? You win the weirdest comment on YouTube today. What do you mean? Okay. So Meagle's dead, guys. Rip. And then uh, MySpace, obviously. MySpace is still around, no? Yeah, dude, MySpace is popping. Look at this website. It's great.
There's stuff happening. Somebody uses it. It's doing great, guys. It's alive. Moving up in the world. Beats the dead tears. All right. Honorable mention platforms. Let's talk about um, Patreon. No discoverability. Helps you build a business. Helps you create... You can create content. You can get paid for content. And you can get paid for sales. Patreon's very good. Um, solid B. Somewhere around Instagram-ish. Rumble is a solid C. Situational. Substack. Solid B. Very good. Uh, isn't Patreon valid invalidated by YouTube memberships? No. And let me tell you why. YouTube memberships take 40... Uh, they take 40%. Patreon takes 8%. So the um, the platform that takes less of your money is good. I, I mean, D the Devin Nash channel basically survives off of Patreon, and I'm very happy with it anecdotally. But also from a data-driven perspective, it's it's very good. Um, so yeah, Patreon's solid B tier. Um, it's useful to any business too. It's not just in like gaming. It's not just situational. Tombor is an F. Medium is an F. No discoverability on Medium. For the best place to vlog these days is Substack, which why it gets a, which is why it gets a B. How is the bot influence on these metrics um, considered? It's not really um, like the we're not using bots as a criteria. It's too esoteric of a criteria for what we're doing. We're just trying to figure out if it can, is it good to run a content creation business or a regular business on these platforms, and to a lesser extent, is it good to advertise on? I know the bot data very well, um, and. I don't think it's relevant to incorporate here, but it won't affect like these rankings in terms of like, you know, you, uh, it, it's no coincidence that YouTube YouTube also deserves S tier because it doesn't have a lot of bots. And like Reddit's kind of down here because it does. I mean, Threads is like solidly, what do we think Threads is? I think Threads is C tier situational. Probably D actually. YouTube has major bot comments. Yeah, which helps your engagement. Bot comments don't matter on YouTube. What matters is because you're still earning CPM, you're still earning revenue, you're still getting engagement. Bots aren't used maliciously on uh, to affect advertising or, or um, video creation in a substantial way on YouTube, but they are on Reddit. And you'd be really surprised how good YouTube's bot detection is. It's like amazing. Like that. Like I don't know if anyone's ever noticed, but you can't really view bot videos on YouTube. Like if you use if you if you view bot videos on YouTube. You push like a hundred thousand Pakistan users to a YouTube video. YouTube obliterates that video, and your entire channel is never discovered again. Would you put OnlyFans on this list? Yeah, OnlyFans would lead C tier, uh, it, situational. But for situational, it's the best platform there is for those creators. Like, if if you're an adult content creator, like woman, hundred percent OnlyFans, easy. Also, people sleep on Substack. I wish there were some more images on here, but this is what we have. Fansly, um, below only fans, but also C situational, mid C. Uh, Google Plus is Google for business. So this is like uh, very situational, C situational. I'm pretty happy with these rankings. Yeah, I'm super happy. I'm super happy with S and A tier. Very, very happy with those ones. It gets a little bit muddy in here, but I think we did good in terms of like ordered tier lists. And also I would say that one of the reasons why Twitch is so low yeah, like, is because I have the most data on the platform. So I know how rare it is to actually make money off of the platform. Like it's just too hard. If you are a YouTuber, you have such a high chance at earning revenue like so, so early on. Like getting your first 100 to $200 on YouTube is so, so, so possible. But like getting your first 100 to $200 on Twitch is like probably never gonna happen. I think if I did more work with Twitter, I might put Twitter ahead of Facebook. It might be fair to put Twitter ahead of Facebook, actually. Let's go by the criteria. Discoverability on Twitter is S. Building a business is like close to S. Creating content is close to S. Getting paid for content is pretty bad, but possible. And getting paid for business and sales, like a lot of people kill it. I think Twitter might be better than Facebook. Facebook discoverability is not as good. Building a business is better. Creating content is worse. Getting paid for content is equal or better. It's hard, man. Like you, you might, you might, and then getting paid for is like equal or better. You might tie them. I think. I think. I. I. I think they're. I think they're pretty much. They're. They're much tied. Yeah. iMessage is be better than Twitch. A hundred percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Facebook has so many more people on it. Good point. Yeah. So many more people, and then like people of like different demographics, right? Like Twitter 
like the unfortunate truth of Twitter is like it's very slowly moving, slowly or quickly sliding down the hill of becoming like a right wing platform, like, you know, similar to like Rumble. Um, and the problem with that is that then you only have that one demographic of people to advertise to. How about email? Email stays on the um, B tier. It's like it's it's like it's like high B, man. Like it stays. Uh, it, it, email is between Spotify and messaging. Email is still one of the best forms of marketing there is, but it's not discoverable, so it doesn't like go as high as like A or S. All right. Yep. I think that's the tier list. I think that's I think that's everything. You'd be crazy not to have like presence in these places if you're serious about doing business you got to be everywhere on here and then it just gets like then like absolutely below a is like very far from mandatory even a is not mandatory but s is very good hope you guys enjoyed this i think that was good